Good afternoon. It is for US based people. Um, good morning, really early for the, the APEC time zone and a, a late evening for um, the EMEA time zone. Um, Wilfred Spiegelberg uh, and Wang Da on, on the other side uh, talking about unicorn, the past, present, and future. Uh, Wangda will take over from this point on um, for the first bit, uh, talking about what's Unicorn and why we work uh, on Unicorn and what's, uh, what, what it is. Um, then I'll take you through uh, the current state of the program, uh, the community, and what we're looking at for the future. Um, mm -hmm. Yep. Any questions um, pop up in the chat? We, we'll try to monitor whoever is not talking. Uh, we'll, uh, we'll probably interrupt and we'll see what uh, what's going on. So, um, Wangna, for, yep. for yep. start with the what is unicorn and why? Yeah, sure. So thanks, thanks, Wilfred. So can you turn the slide? Yeah. So you probably will ask this question: uh, Why we need another scheduler? Um, so, uh, we first need to know what is resource scheduler. Um, so resource scheduler, um, by definition is to assign the machine resources to your applications or services, right? Assume you have a bunch of machines in your data center. You have 100 servers in the data center and you want to run the, um, uh, ETL workload or uh, using MapReduce or using Spark, or you want to uh, run your website using Apache HTTP2. Um, so yeah, so so uh, you have to get resources from uh, one of your machine and run your applications there. So example of scheduler, uh, uh, in the Hadoop, we have a Yarn capacity scheduler and a fast scheduler. And in Kubernetes, we have um, default scheduler, QBatch, Volcano, and other schedulers. Right. Um, so the reason we want to create another scheduler is because we see a lot of change of the demand, and we have different focuses of different projects. So for the batch, um, which is applications and, and, and non-running services, they have lots of different properties. So for the batch workload, they are typically running for a short to a median period of time, right? Uh, from uh, seconds to hours, that's the uh, um, most of the batch applications run. So for the batch application, they was uh, they were spinning off a large number of copies to to read their data and try to process the data and try to write the data back. Right? And for the uh, long running services compared to that, it's much more static. Right? Uh, you are you probably not uh, typically see an, an Apache HTTP two service runs for only for a few seconds and 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 and, and, and turn it down. Right? And this long running services sometimes needs to be scaled up and down based on the requirement, but that will be more. Um, more predictable, right? So for the batch, we need faster scheduling decisions um, and because in our, um, from our um, customers, a lot of customers, they are running Spark applications and they have lots of um, tasks to run every day. Every day they probably will run hundreds of thousands tasks in a medium sized cluster, right? If we have to wait the scheduling decision for very, very long, and uh, we will wait forever for these uh, scheduling decisions. And also for the batch workload, uh, we have a, a more a, um, a more harder requirement for the multi-tenancy of resource sharing. So even uh, you you still need multi-tenancy in the service world. You uh, if if one team run uh, if if there's one 
department hosts some website and, and another department hosts another website, they will share the resources with, uh, with each other. But that kind of sharing will be more, pre uh, more um, um, predictable, right? It's not something going to be changed every day, every hour, every minute like that. But when you run batch workload, the batch is very bursty. And, and for normally, a lot of batch workload is only run uh, several times a day. And every time it will requires a lot of resource. It's not something will consistently need resource. So we need a better way to, um, to uh, have the resource quota can be applied to, the, uh, to your cluster so people from different teams um, can share the resources with, with each other. And applications running in the same cluster can also share resources with each other. So we also have cloud native um, uh, requirements, which you want to, um, to run your uh, compute cluster on cloud. Uh, so this cl cluster needs to scale up and down. And this is on-prem, it's a fixed size cluster. So we have researched um, all the different um, schedulers in the existing existing um, um, in industry, and we didn't find a scheduler can fit all these needs um, at once. So that's why we uh, want to go ahead to create our own scheduler. So if I can go to the next slide. So what do we need to have? So for the universal uh, scheduler uh, is something we want to build. We want to have one single scheduler to, for all the different environments. And we don't want your application to change the, their code to use the new scheduler. It's, it's not um, easy to ask any people who are using Spark. And if they want to use a new scheduler, they have to change their Spark code or change on, maybe only a little bit of their, uh, their workflow. They, they, they won't like it. And we want to unify the user experiences. So basically, no matter if you are running application, uh, applications on cloud, on-prem, or if you want to deploy batch and services in the same cluster, or if you uh, want to make a resource can be um, a resource quota can be applied in different clusters, you can use a very similar um, configuration to, to, um, to configure your resource needs. And also you can use the same uh, UI to monitoring the resource needs. So we also want to return from scratch. That is not because we like to reinvent a wheel. It's because um, existing schedulers, they are actually re, uh, so, so they are all uh, inherent a lot of latency um, demands. Like in YARN, there are lots of demands in how the batch should share resources with, with each other. And in Kubernetes, it will define how the Kubernetes should, should share resources with each other. So we want to start in from scratch, and we want to start in from the, the, the needs, and the, the actual needs. So then we will have a cleaner code base to build on. We don't have to uh, maintain the latency steps. So that's the step, please. So what is Unicom? The Unicom is an open source universal scheduler. And Y for YAR, K for Kubernetes, and Uni for Unified. Yeah, that's right. So at the beginning, we started the, this project within Cloudera as an internal project. And um, since January 2019, we have a small team with scheduling background um, and started this effort. And we open source this under Cloudera Git, uh, GitHub since July 2019. And uh, the the Initial goal for this is to first focus on Kubernetes because running uh, deploy batch workload on Kubernetes, for example, deploy Spark or Flink on Kubernetes is very demanding requirement. And uh, initially, this has to be very uh, um, be cloud native. Uh, we want to make this can compatible with other scaling with all these cloud native features. So for the incubator project. Uh, we entered Apache Incubator since 20, um, January 2020, and we um, focused on application support after that. We're adding a lot of scheduling features, uh, and also we, we now support Spark, Flink, TensorFlow, and things like that. And the reason we choose Incubator is uh, Apache Incubator is really, uh, has really good governance model, and we got a lot of help from uh, Incubator PMCs, 
And yeah, so 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 that's helped us to grow the project pretty fast. And the top project is written in Go because that's the standard uh, language in the cloud native world. Yeah, I think that's all for my slides. So Wilfred, please take over. Yeah, so let let let's go through a bit of the the current state. Um, like what Wang they said. Um, started in 2019 uh, we're now in uh, 2020 so uh, we've we've got through some some time um we've currently got six github repos so we we do have a bit of a split between the, the different repos um we've got a number of code repos uh, the core the the shim uh, web and a scheduler interface and beside that we run two non-code repos for our releases um, and the, the website. Um, part of the releases is also the, the deployment, the helm charts and, and things like that, uh, that we need to provide to make deployment work, make deployments work in a um, code cloud native kind of way. We've released two releases under the Apache incubator. Uh, the first one, uh, May and the second one uh, just recently in August uh, 2020. So um, we'll talk more about the releases and the, and the community during uh, the rest of the, the talk when we get there. So the current architecture of Unicorn. So the design of Unicorn was based on the fact that we could have and um, we will have different kind of orchestration uh, systems. Um, and different kind of container orchestration systems over the long run. Um, like was said before, we've started looking at Kubernetes and the cloud native side of things. So we currently run with one shim as the container organization orchestrator system. Um, but future will give us more and multiple shims. Um, the shim communicates through the scheduler interface with the unicorn core. So again, here we see a number of the, the repositories that we just talked about, core, scheduler interface, and shim. They're working independently so we can make changes and add facilities and, and functionality in the core while keeping the shim, the, the integration with uh, different orchestration systems the same. Um, because we've got a predefined layer, uh, we also allow other groups of other um, teams to all come in and provide their own different shim talking to the core as uh, the container. So the current shim, the, uh, the Kubernetes shim, um, supports two kinds of de deployments. We've got the data centers, the on-prem uh, kind of systems, and uh, the cloud instances on an AWS or um, Google Cloud or something like that. As I mentioned earlier by, uh, by Wangda, um, performance is a, a point that is completely different between, let's say, the Kubernetes default scheduler and what we would need for an application kind of scheduling. Um, from a unicorn perspective, we looked at it and said, okay, we, we need fast scheduling because we need applications. Um, application support and if we're going to compare that to what we currently have within the default scheduler um, we can see that for the shim and the design that we've got with the unicorn uh, scheduler that we are far better in processing the the pods and the the allocations um, compared to the default scheduler. So the performance numbers 
um, for let's say services and other um, long running things it are not that important. If a web server takes half a second late longer to start up, um, then that does not really matter because it runs for days and days on end. But if you've got 100,000 pods over a day to start up and it takes long to start up every single pod, then that will have a large impact on applications running on that cluster. So um, in the community um, through Alibaba, they run some testing on the performance and we, from a unicorn perspective, see an improvement um, of, depending on how big it is, uh, 134, so 134% or 164% compared to the standard um, Kubernetes scheduler. The other part that we bring from the Unicorn is uh, a management web UI. So, like what you can see with other schedulers, um, looking at a yarn or, or other bits and pieces, we need to be able to see what's happening on the scheduler itself. And we provide different overviews based on applications, queues, nodes, um, and uh, the scheduling throughput um, that you can see in, in these kinds of uh, systems. Uh, improvements around the, the web UI are coming through. So the sim simplicity was there at first, just to show what, what we were doing, and we putting more and more information in this UI to allow you to monitor and manage your cluster better. So from a functionality perspective, currently um, Unicorn is deployed as a simple, straightforward, one executable in which we have combined a core and a shim. So that's not really the, the end model that we want to go to because in the end model, we want to be able to deploy multiple shims or different shims against the same core. Now, we're not yet there. Currently, they're deployed as the core with the shim as one, um, one executable. We're focused currently purely on Kubernetes for the scheduling. And in that, um, with the choice, we've also said, look, we need to be able to coexist with other Kubernetes schedulers. Like Wanda mentioned in the talk earlier, there are a number of different schedulers. Um, every Kubernetes cluster comes with the default scheduler uh, set up and engaged by, by default, but you can also extend that with uh, Volcano or um, other schedulers. So from, from our perspective, we want to be able to coexist with those schedulers and um, not interfere with their working, but only schedule what we need to schedule on the cluster. The other focus for us has been working with autoscalers. Uh, so making sure that we can grow and shrink the cluster as needed and that we can deploy and still provide all the functionality that we want as per normal working with those autoscalers. Um, if you look at, for instance, Yarn, um, there's far less of a um, focus on working with an autoscaler because the Yarn cluster is set up. You've got your nodes, it's running on-prem, and um, there's no change in the number of nodes in the cluster. Everything is far more static. While if you're looking at a cloud perspective, from a cloud perspective, we deploy far more um, in a cluster that can grow and shrink when needed. So for us also, we need to be elastic. So queues, resource quotas, all those things that we want to manage, we need to be able to grow and shrink based on the number of nodes, based on what's there, based on what's needed. Now, 
Unicorn currently allows you to grow and shrink the cluster. The quotas will grow and shrink with it um, where, we, where we can and where we need to. We also need to be able to manage um, different kinds of setups. So Yarn often runs within a on-prem kind of solution and does scheduling based on what it's got and how many uh, things, how many nodes, how many resources it's got available. Um, you schedule differently when you're scheduling in a known kind of setup than when you compare that to a setup that is going up and down in resource sizes. So we've provided configurable sorting policies to be able to adjust to those kinds of setups. Um, in a cluster that is set up in the cloud, you might want to uh, schedule in a way that you provide as much density on a node that you can. So pack all the things that you can on a node and not extend your numbers of nodes um, too quickly and then scale up the cluster, but only use half of the resources or less of every single node. While if you're working on-prem, that doesn't really matter. You probably want to spread your load out over the, over the cluster that you've got and make sure that everything has got as many many resources and as much CPU as, as it can. So we allow you to set that up and configure it like you want to and adjust to the need of the, the deployment that you've got. So if we're gonna look at the functionality and we compare the functionality what is delivered between Unicorn and um, for instance, the, the default scheduler, then um, We've got scheduling um, based on applications uh, and we support that within Unicorn. An application is not really something that is known um, within Kubernetes world. It's not something that uh, the Kubernetes scheduler works with. It schedules a pod, it schedules a request and that's it. It doesn't look at, oh, the, the application is running, does it need these resources? Is it part of this application or part of another application? So we've got a first class citizen uh, as an application, which is far more based on a batch job kind of way of things. Um, job ordering. The default scheduler just schedules resources while um, Unicorn looks at where does, the job, where does the resource belong to? Where does it come from? How do we make sure that that application, that job is handled according to the policies that it's being set up. So we saw we support different policies, um, first in, first out, fair sharing of the resources. So nicely shared between all these things um, or a state aware um, sorting that you make sure that um, you only allow new applications within a limited way into the queue so that you do not overrun the cluster and, and scale up, need to scale up too quickly. Um, fine grace, grained resource and capacity management. The default scheduler has got a simple on the submit enforcement of resource um, requests and if you don't have the resources, it will deny access to the cluster and the, the client needs to take over and needs to do all the um, the handling of resubmitting and doing all that kind of stuff. Well, on Unicorn, we queue the request, we, we put it in the queue. It doesn't take any resources if it's not running. So we don't have to enforce anything on that point. Um, and we also allow you to set up queue systems within Unicorn, which can have their own minimum and maximum resources set. So we allow you to do far more than just a, um, there's no resources at this point in time and we deny you access. Um, resource fairness between the different queues or different applications. Uh, Kubernetes 
doesn't look at it it just denies you access um, while in unicorn we allow you to share resources fairly or um, on a priority basis uh, which are, which is being worked on between applications that are within a queue or over the different queues in the in the system so we support native workloads big data workloads out of the the box because that's the design that unicorn was built on we need to be able to have applications and then work through them while the default schedule is just does long-running services and as we've seen in one of the previous slides um, Unicorn is designed for performance, far larger throughput that we need to be able to support uh, compared to the default scheduler. So let's go and, and have a look at the, the community. So, like Wang said, we've been open source since uh, July 2019, but that was purely uh, a Cloudera point, and the community started working after that um, and uh, we've got uh, a couple of instances a couple of examples here from uh, other companies that run unicorn in their uh, in their clusters in their setups um, and i think at the moment there's a, a different talk also going on around um, what we've seen with um, other kubernetes and unicorn scheduling um, but the first instance uh, we've got lift is a uh, a big community user and they used unicorn in non-production clusters um, they're pushing through large numbers of jobs and have seen um, big increases in their um, utilization and higher uh, request hits so the, the first in first out and fair scheduling made sure that the jobs work and then flow through better within cloudera we ship um uh the, the public cloud uh product and unicorn does the scheduling within the the public cloud product that we've got um, mainly for for spark jobs at the moment um but it also does the, the the microservices that we need within uh, the the public cloud offering, and it schedules them in a shared kind of way. Uh, like what we said, we can't we can do more than just the uh, batch jobs or the the services with with Unicorn. So in that kind in that setup we specifically focused on uh, auto scaling and, and resource management and resource quota management and then alibaba as the as one of the third um, community members um, they've been running mainly focused on the on the performance the performance figures that we saw a little bit earlier on um, were done in alibaba uh, cloud setups and they run with um, pre-production clusters on-premise clusters with 100 of 100 load um, they're working on production deployments and they specifically focused on the performance and the, and the resource sharing so they made sure that um, they've got their queues set up uh, with resource fairness between the queues and they were running large apache flink jobs on the on kubernetes and again, they saw a big gain in scheduling performance. So jobs got scheduled quicker and pushed out and then into the clusters far, far quicker than with the default scheduler. So for our release work, um, we're trying to release about every three months uh, through the community. So we schedule minor release at the moment. Uh, we did 0 0.8, 0 0.9, and we're currently working on um, 0 0.10. And uh, the, the current planning is for us to release um, 0 0.10 late October, um, early November for, of this year. Um, the planning for 1.0 is, is, is on its way. Um, 
we still want to do a couple of things before we we get there but we we are working towards that um and we hope that we can announce a uh, 1.0 in the not too distant future so the other thing that we are really focused on is, is growing the community so we're seeing more interest we're seeing interest coming from different uh users um we had some um contribution coming in uh, recently uh, from from Red Hat looking at uh, running Unicorn on OpenShift clusters. Um, so we, we we see different groups coming in and, and looking more over our shoulder, starting to, to work on the on the product and, and helping us out. Over the last couple of months, um, We've also added two new com committers uh, to the uh, to the group. Um, like I mentioned earlier, uh, Alibaba was really early on. They they came with, uh, with with the project, but Lyft is one of those new committers that we've seen coming up, um, and they gave a, a, a large amount of feedback on what we were doing and helped that. So. One of the other community com, uh, contributed uh, bits was our website. Um, we we came out of the world from 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 a yarn and a, a submarine and things like that. So we we leveraged what was there and uh, built our own website. But from a community contribution, we 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 got a complete new website built. Um, contributed based on, on DocuSaurus, uh, a Facebook open source project. And um, we're running with that now. If, if you've got questions, look at that. Um, we, we use the website to provide us with our version documentation. Um, and all the, the whole build is, is automated. Uh, and there was a large community uh, distribution that came out of uh, a completely different uh, project. Um, Besides that, we, we do a community sync um, bi-weekly or monthly. Um, we do it in different time zones and languages. Um, Weiwei um, runs the, uh, the Chinese language um, setup because we've got a um, large, larger group of people also coming in from China. So that hooks again back into what seen within Apache also is the, the rise of the, the, the APEC and the different time zones. So we try to accommodate that. So we run an English um, community sync and we run a Chinese language based um, community sync. Again, if you want to yeah. get more information on that. Yeah, so we we'll we have six minutes left. I'm sure. Okay. Yeah. So what do we do? What what's the future? Where where are we going uh, currently with the um, with the setup? So the next release, like I said before, is uh, zero point ten. We're looking at core scheduling improvements. Uh, we think we can be even faster and uh, better at the, at scheduling. So we're we're looking at a, a large change for that. Um, we we've seen uh, community engagement around the tracing and um, the, the logging that we want to implement. And yeah, Kubernetes is moving along. So we, we want to move and, and see new versions of Kubernetes supported. So um, 116 is uh, in progress. Other improvements is um, even better support for applications. Uh, Tracking using the, the Kubernetes CRD um, again focused on the on the Kubernetes side at the moment, and um, we want to improve the the web UI and REST API so that um, we can integrate or we can be managed using um, our own tools and then provide um, automated uh, information statistics or um, configuration changes. So in the, the future, the midterm, um, community-driven, um, 
and this is also looking forward towards um, a, a 1.0 release. Um, but yeah, there is the push from Kubernetes to support later versions. Um, but again, that requires us to maybe make some changes in our API use. So that's uh, things that we're looking at for a, a, a little bit of a longer term. Um, other things that have been asked um, about uh, were preemption. We do have preemption at the moment, but there's a, a phase two uh, being scheduled for that. Um, other questions around gang scheduling, um, better support for the for, for applications and um, think around spot instances to even do cluster scaling better and cheaper uh, than what we can do uh, at this point in time. So the, the real future, um, maybe a little bit of a longer uh, work uh, planning, and that's in 1.0 or even later, is um, we need to provide a, a compatibility guide um, and make sure that we explain and, and document how we can write and, and how you can support uh, multiple SIMs and, and what what can run against what. Um, for that, we need to simplify build and deploy instructions. Um, but yeah, all that come, comes later on um, when we put more thought and, and more work into multi-SIM uh, deployments and, and improvements. Um, and we still have uh, the the additional shim uh, around the yarn also in the pipeline, but that's uh, like we said uh, further away in the in in the future. Yep. Okay, then that's it for the the presentation at this point. Um, if there's further any questions, hit us up on the uh, on the channel. And. Um, if there's no further questions for us now, and um, it's quarter past. So maybe let's wait for a few minutes and yep. because um, types of question will take some time. <laughs> so <laughs> let's wait for maybe two minutes. We'll have two minutes left. And yep. yeah. Yeah, so thanks, Justin, and really thanks for your support of our project. Thank you. And uh, Justin, as a fellow Australian, yes, it is really early uh, for all of us around here. <laughs> <laughs> OK, so it seems there is no more questions. So if you have any questions, feel free to drop an email to our dev list um, uh, or find us in the um, in the Slack channel uh, or, yeah, so, so I think we are pretty easy to find. And um, please try uh, Unicorn and uh, let us know if you have any feedbacks. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, see you.